we make of Dell Technologies now that it's a publicly traded company again? The Dell of today is very different from the personal computer-focused Dell that took itself private roughly five years ago. The new Dell has become a major player in enterprise hardware and software, thanks to the acquisition of EMC. Just so gave the company an 82% stake in Kramer Fave VMware, one of our cloud kings. Think of Dell Technologies as a one-time PC assembler that's now the major arms dealer software and hardware to the rapidly growing data center business, as well as the Internet of Things. I'm betting it's got a bright future, certainly better than what the stock indicates. I have said over and over it's way too low, but don't take it from me. Earlier today, we had a chance to speak with Michael Dell, the founder, chairman, and CEO of Dell Technologies. Take a look. Michael, I've got to tell you, people may not even remember, but your story is remarkable. From the humility that you had, the humble beginning at University of Texas, building computers, to what now is, I thought, the best technology purchase in history, $67 billion for EMC. What a journey. You are not a PC company anymore, though. That's right. I mean, we combined the leading IT infrastructure companies in the world, and you know, a lot of people talk about now cloud infrastructure. Right. You take the software infrastructure that VMware provides, EMC and Dell and Pivotal together, and we've created you know, the, the, the world's leading IT infrastructure company, Last year, uh, $91 billion in revenues. Our cloud data center business grew plus 19%, almost uh, you know, approaching a $40 billion uh, business. And you know, we're gaining share, growing faster than all the leading competitors, and really have positioned ourselves as a company that can help our customers with the digital transformation, their journey to the cloud, and modernizing their IT environments their workforce environment, and also IT security. Right. I mean, I think people also would know storage, number one, server, number one. These are, these are businesses that I don't even think people knew that Dell was in, but when you were private, you got this, you built this empire. Uh, absolutely. And, and in you know, storage, uh, we're, we're larger than number two, number three, number four, all combined. You know, we grew more than half of the industry growth last year was Dell EMC. And, you know, again, right. It's actually not that hard when you think about it in hindsight, when you combine the leader in storage and the leader in servers and the leader in virtualization and software, infrastructure software. So you got, you got the, the, the winning hand and customers are betting with us and you know, we got 99% of the Fortune 500, millions of small and medium sized businesses around the world and you know, we continue to grow very nicely. Well, speaking of betting with you, or let's say investing, uh, I remember when you came public, I, I working at Goldman Sachs, uh, the compound rate, 13,500%, 27 times the S&P for your previous iteration. How do you beat that? Can you ever come close to that now? Well, that'd be pretty hard if yeah. you do the math, Jim. Well, of <laughs> uh, large numbers, but, but, but you're a winner, and I, don't want, I want people to know who you were. I mean, I'm old enough to know. I want others to know. Look, we've got a fabulous business and you know, an incredible team, you know, 20,000 engineers, scientists, PhDs, constantly innovating. You know, we've invested you know, well over $20 billion in the last five years in R&D. And the combined innovations, the customer relationships that we have, I think we're incredibly well positioned. And when you layer on top of that what is happening in the world today, Right, with the explosion in the number of connected right. devices, the absolute uh, explosion in the amount of data, and then 5G coming around the corner. The requirement for new infrastructure is tremendous. And we are the essential infrastructure company, whether it's in the, you know, uh, you know where, wherever that may reside, right. right? The private cloud, the public cloud, the telco cloud, right. the boom in the edge, right. we are, going to you know, uh, serve up that, that capability better than anybody on the planet. Well, I think that there's some uh, demystifying we have to do. Well, first of all, I think the analyst coverage, while nice, is about some of the parts. Uh, I think that they're not including deferred revenue, not to be too nitty gritty, but we have to make, I have to make money for people. They're not including deferred revenue. They're not looking at the excess cash flow. Are those better ways to analyze the company than just looking at the e EPS? 
Well, you know, we'll, we'll let the analysts right. you know, d decide that. But I we, want people at home to recognize have, that uh, you're making a lot of money. $24 billion in deferred revenue on the balance sheet, in case anyone's paying attention. I am. It grew, it grew 15% year over year. Uh, and certainly when you look at the profile of the business, it is a very different business. I mentioned the 20,000 engineers right. before. Almost 90% of them are software. So it is a very different company than the company we had 10 years ago. And look, you know, customers are voting with, with, with their dollars. I still think that people, once again, are underestimating you. They're looking at you, uh, dude, you got a Dell. Uh, they're looking at you as a company that maybe even figured out how to uh, hook up a PC to this vast network. How did you have the vision to know that you had to kind of not leave that business behind because you're taking share still, 24, what, 24 quarters of share take. But 24 how did you, quarters in a row. Right, yes. but how did you know that you had to say that wasn't enough? Most of the companies haven't been able to pull it off. I don't mind being underestimated, okay? That's a good thing. We talked about that earlier. Right. Uh, look, again, you know, we had an alliance with EMC for many years. Right. We had a partnership with VMware, and it was pretty obvious to us that when you put all these together, you create an incomparable set of capabilities and a platform right. that is incredibly powerful for this future that is being built out right in front of us and you know right uh, now the digitization the, the, is the, the revenue synergies have been right. much more than anybody, anybody anticipated before. including us by the way you know we right. grew 11 billion dollars over 11 billion dollars just last year you know to to you know record 91 billion so it's working very well. Okay, and you also got a billion dollars in synergies, far more than people felt when you when you did VMware. My problem is this, I'm going on the web, looking at Twitter, people are saying, well, wait a second, why should I buy uh, why should I buy VMware, which is a stock that I've been recommending vociferously, when I should buy Dell, they own this big piece, and mathematically, how's it possible, this is what they're asking, <laughs> that VMware could be bigger than Dell, that doesn't make sense. Can you help people understand the math? Well, we, we do own a little over 80% of, of VMware, you know, uh, I'm going to let the analysts do the math and, and, and you do the math. we got to get some. My job board, is to man. keep, you know, we grew every one of our businesses last year, double digit rate. My job is to, you know, lead this incredible team and continue to grow faster than the industry. I think people over time will figure out that this is an incredible company and, right. you know, the right things will happen. You mentioned incredible team. One of the things I'm trying to do in 2019, I finally got to the age where I have to do what's, well, I always wanted to do what's right. You know that. But you have been an unbelievable uh, ethical business. You care passionately about that. You've won a number of awards for sustainability. And you and your wife, Susan, have do more philanthropy. And I look, I'll say it, okay? I have seen what you've done with healthcare. I've seen what you've done with a hospital. I have even seen what you've done with the monumental effort to rebuild Houston after the hurricane. How do you first do all these time? How do you uh, divide your time? But more importantly, why is it so important that you do these things, both for yourself and for your, your people and for your wife? Well, we, we've, we've been given a great opportunity. And, you know, look, I think, you know, if we look at the world economic system right. today, you could say it's not working perfectly for no. everyone. No. And, you know, we have been, we have been very fortunate. You know, uh, in August of 2017, when Hurricane Harvey uh, showed up on the coast of, of Texas, you know, uh, my wife and I were watching this on television and they showed a neighborhood in Houston, Texas. And it was actually the neighborhood where I grew up and rode my bike, you know, uh, every day on the street that they were showing. And Jim, the water was up to the rooftops. And, you know, to watch that and not do anything is irresponsible. And, and so, yeah, we organized this Rebuild Texas campaign, raised $100 million. We pitched in $36 million. But, you know, uh, it's a great privilege to be able to make privilege. a difference and to, uh, you know, do so not just with our company, but uh, personally. And, you know, my wife is super involved in running the foundation on, on a, on, on a you know. last question, let's go also future. Uh, sometimes I worry that AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, that these things are going to leave people behind, Michael. We know that AI is the future. How do we protect people while we advance and how do we control it in a responsible way? 
I think we have to, uh, as, as humans, make you know the, these these machines uh, reflect our humanity okay. in right. and do it in a responsible way, in an ethical way, um, and. Look, the pace of technology change is not going to slow down. It's no. just going to get faster and faster. It's leaving people behind. You know that. You've done it, more in it, your area than anybody. It's it, leaving it, people behind. It absolutely is. And, and we have to think about and figure out how we engage more of those people. But also, look, I'm a huge optimist that technology will do far more good right, than, right. than bad. And, you know, it's addressing all kinds of opportunities in healthcare, in education, in sustainability, the environment. Good. Certainly, you know, businesses are becoming more productive and more effective and ultimately technology is about enabling human potential. The and Internet of Things is about enabling human potential, right? We're spreading it out, we're bringing it to the edge, we're helping people with that. It's not disenfranchising. And you know, the last 35 years have been remarkable and, and amazing, but actually, this is just the beginning, right? <laughs> this is just, we're, we're still in the pre-game show to what's gonna come in the next 35 years. Okay, well, let's, let's leave it at that. That's Michael Dell, he's the chairman and CEO of Dell Technologies. You know I love the stock. What can I say? It's the most inexpensive tech stock I follow. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jim. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.